As our Australopithecus ancestors roamed through Africa, a new chapter unfolded with the advent of Homo. Taking bold steps with larger brains and a precision grip, these pioneers crafted tools, navigating the challenges posed by Africa's formidable predators. As the evolution was unfolding spanning millions of years, Homo stood out from its Australopithecus ancestors. The African landscape bore witness to their progress over millions of years, a narrative unraveled through fossils, artifacts, geological clues, and the whispers of ancient DNA. The oldest fossils with Homo-like features date back around 2.8 million years and were found in Ethiopia. Before 2.1 million years ago, we have limited information, mostly about teeth and jaws. By 2 million years ago, various Homo species were becoming common in Eastern and Southern Africa. In the 1960s, a team led by Louis and Mary Leakey made exciting discoveries in Old Duvai, Tanzania, uncovering a series of ancient specimens. One standout find was OH7, or Johnny's child, a young individual with a mandible, parietal, and hand bones. Another discovery, OH8, included foot bones, a molar fragment, and phalanxes. These fossils indicated a different hominin type than Zingenthropus boise found earlier. The Leakeys proposed a new species called Homo habilis for these finds, highlighting distinct features such as a less prognathic face, larger cranial capacity, and a smaller chewing apparatus compared to Australopithecus. The dental arcade had a parabolic shape like later Homo specimens. The species was named habilis meaning able, handy, mentally skillful, and vigorous, reflecting its presumed tool-making capabilities. However, the proposal of Homo habilis stirred controversy. At that time, the general belief was that the morphological differences between earlier Australopithecus africanus and the later Homo erectus were significant enough, making it challenging to accept another gracile species. Additionally, the genus Homo was thought to belong to the Middle Pleistocene with a larger brain capacity than the old Duvai specimens. If you encountered Hebelus two million years ago, you might not have easily distinguished it from Australopithecus. Both were similar in height and weight, around 1.3 meters tall and 40 kilograms. However, Hebelus had a less archaic appearance, with a higher and rounder head, less protruding face, and smaller jaw. Despite these differences, microscopic studies showed both species primarily consumed fruits. Notably, Habilis had a larger brain, ranging from 600 to 700 plus cubic centimeters, indicating a significant increase compared to Australopithecus. Thigh and limb bones confirmed their ability to walk upright, but hand bones were more curved, suggesting a powerful grasping hand suitable for climbing trees. The skeletal anatomy of Habilis displayed a mix of primitive and advanced features, indicating both bipedal walking and retained tree climbing abilities. The debate around Habilis includes the coexistence of multiple early human species, such as Homo rudolfensis, and the considerable morphological variation within the genus. The fossil record challenges the notion of gradual evolution, suggesting a pattern of punctuated equilibrium with long stability periods interrupted by bursts of rapid change due to environmental or, or organismal factors. The emergence of Homo erectus marked the complete disappearance of primitive body forms and sexual dimorphism. The cause of this change in evolutionary pace remains a mystery, with some suggesting climate change as a potential factor. Between 3 and 1.5 million years ago, early Homo species, including Homo habilis, adapted to environmental challenges evident in archaeological behaviors like stone tool making and transportation of rocks around 2.6 to 2 million years ago. Stone transport, even over significant distances, became characteristic between 2 to 1.9 million years ago. This behavior allowed hominins to consistently bring tools and food together across diverse habitats, adapting to changing food resources. The Olduin industry, named after its discovery at Old Duvai Gorge, Tanzania, produced the earliest known tools around 2.6 to 2 million years ago. These tools primarily consisted of cores and flakes, with flakes serving as primary cutting tools for tasks like butchering and hide processing. Hammerstones were also used to crack open bones and extract marrow. Stone tools were crucial for early Homo's dietary expansion, 
enhancing access to meat and fat resources. The increased importance of animal resources around 2.5 million years ago coincided with the adoption of stone tools, playing a vital role in ecological adjustment and offsetting the energetic costs of stone transport. Around 2 to 1.8 million years ago, a new behavior emerged called delayed consumption of food, where hominins transported carcass portions over distances before consuming them. This behavior suggests a critical step in foraging and sociality. The potential decrease in extrinsic mortality due to predation led to a shift in life history, emphasizing aging and increased longevity, possibly facilitating alloparenting by older individuals. Homo habilis faced dietary challenges that prompted adaptations in tool use and behavior. Although technological innovations played a minor role in their dietary adjustments, the introduction of tools enhanced dietary flexibility. However, it's important to note that tools did not completely replace the role of jaws and teeth in initial food processing for habilis, as their dental features remained adapted to specific food types. Scientists are exploring the existence of special activity areas for early humans, akin to spots for sleeping, tool making, and cooking. Evidence from locations such as East Turkana and Olduvai Gorge initially suggested the presence of habitual activity areas resembling ancestral homes where daily tasks were performed. However, recent perspectives caution against making assumptions based on this evidence, given its antiquity around 2 million years and the potential impact of natural processes on preserved tools and bones. Research indicates that Homo habilis engaged in tool use and worked with animal bones, as seen in sites like Gona, Ethiopia, and Kubifora. At Kubifora, for instance, there is evidence of hominins using small stones to extract meat and bones from a hippopotamus carcass though it remains uncertain whether they killed the animal or scavenged it. The other sites, such as those in Olduvai Gorge, reveal concentrations of tools and bones, suggesting places where hominins processed food and tools. These locations may not have been permanent homes, but rather spots frequented for specific tasks. The debate persists regarding whether these were merely utilitarian spots for tool and food processing or served as temporary dwelling places. The question of whether Homo habilis were skilled hunters, scavengers, or a combination of both has sparked debates. Analysis of the archaeological record from around 2 million years ago paints a complex picture. The East African savanna, inhabited by diverse carnivores and ungulates, likely influenced opportunistic adaptations. While some argue for a shift toward using meat as a crucial food source, recent evidence challenges the notion that early hominins were primarily hunters or scavengers. Instead, they might have been frequent prey themselves, requiring skills such as outsmarting predators, cooperation, and living in small groups for survival. The genetic evidence suggests that Hebelis possessed oxytocin, a hormone promoting trust and cooperation. Changes in oxytocin's role may have occurred when hominins settled into social systems around 1.7 million years ago. The archaeological record, particularly at Old Duvai Gorge, reveals bones with cut marks indicating butchery and disarticulation. However, scavenging seems to have played a crucial role, especially during the dry season when plant foods were scarce. Habilis marked a significant cognitive leap in human evolution. While direct archaeological evidence of their plant consumption is scarce, studies suggest that their diets resembled those of modern non-human primates. Recent research challenges the traditional notion of a strict division of labor between males as hunters and females as plant gatherers. The grandmother hypothesis proposes that older females, akin to grandmothers, played crucial roles in early human societies. Observations among the Hadza people suggest that older women were efficient foragers, contributing to higher fertility rates and longer lifespans. Provisioning or collecting food for others became a common practice, fostering closer family bonds and larger foraging territories. Early homo societies likely involved cooperation among family members challenging conventional gender roles. The necessity for food security and efficient foraging strategies, possibly facilitated by older females, contributed to the development of early human societies and the emergence of advanced foraging techniques. Homo habilis used Oldowan stone tools for processing animal carcasses, indicating both tool-making skills and cognitive abilities to locate and exploit food sources effectively. 
Their diverse foraging strategy likely involved a combination of hunting and scavenging driven by the need for a higher quality diet to support their larger brains and increased energy requirements. Living in larger groups, Homo habilis could better manage resources and protect against predators. Their social intelligence evolved, enabling them to thrive in larger groups where cooperation and sharing were crucial for survival. Anthropologist Robin Dunbar suggests that language evolved as a means for early humans, including Homo habilis, to exchange social information within larger groups, initially supplementing grooming behaviors. Computer simulations propose that Homo habilis may have spent a significant portion of their time grooming, leading to the embedding of social information into vocalizations. While chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, can learn symbolic language under controlled conditions, the sophistication of human language likely emerged more recently, combining biological and cultural evolution. As Homo habilis evolved, changes in subsistence, locomotion, and the introduction of food sharing and tool making enhanced communication and social insight. Their social organization likely differed from non-human primates, resembling modern hunter-gatherer bands. The complexity of their environment and the need for food sharing may have driven the evolution of human intelligence, marked by technological and expressive skills, emphasizing the crucial role of social interactions in shaping the Homo habilis brain. Human evolution involves adaptive radiations, wherein species adapt to changing conditions. Cladistics reveals the human genus as a monophyletic group, emphasizing evolutionary relationships. Anthropologists note an adaptive shift around 1.9 million years ago, separating Australopithecines and Homo habilis from later humans. Early hominins had lower body mass and versatile teeth for varied diets and closed environments. Later humans, starting with Homo erectus, adapted to open terrain with larger body mass and teeth, resembling modern humans. Hominin evolution, spanning 5 million years, showcases diverse branches exploring survival strategies in response to environmental changes.